Hi, Panita. Hi. Hi, Suresh. How are you doing? Uh, very nice. Thank you. And how about you? Very well. Thank you. Thank you for giving us time today. My pleasure. My pleasure, Panita. So, just wanted to understand, I mean, uh, coming from your background uh, with the Airports Authority and uh, various other divisions, was there a particular uh, scenario that you encountered wherein you felt, okay, yes, there is a need for a digital transformation at this stage? At every airport, there were unique challenges. Uh, like, for example, passenger flow management. Uh, yeah. Even today also, passenger flow management is a challenge because, see, when you're looking at uh, the biometric boarding system at the airport, if we follow uh, an unstructured sort of a flow uh, towards the e-gate, then you will have two, three, four faces coming in front of the e-gate. And then it's going to be a challenge for the e-gate to validate your, uh, you know, uh, travel document and identity document. So okay. then there has to be a structured flow where, you know, passenger waits for their turn at a yellow line. And then there is one passenger who's at the gate who gets processed. And then once that passenger goes through, then the next passenger follows. Right. Uh, so that change in uh, behavior uh, was something which has taken some time. But I think you would have seen now that, you know, all the airports are getting into a groove and uh, we are now having a systematic, methodical sort of a process flow at uh, every touch point. Right. And one of the challenges I suggest that I mean, a lot of people complain is about uh, the transparency of where their data is being used. And, uh, how do you answer that? So see, uh, so fundamentally, as I was mentioning, right, from a self-sovereign identity implementation perspective, we are the biggest implementation of self-sovereign identity. And uh, what does self-sovereign identity means? So self-sovereign identity itself says, right, uh, which is self-sovereign identity, meaning you yourself are in power of your identity. You meaning you are a passenger and you are uh, given the charge of controlling your data. And that's precisely what the Jiatra, uh, you know, foundation has done. So what we have done is we have said that, okay, uh, we issue you a credential. So at the time of issue of credential, there is a uh, one-time validation of your Aadhaar uh, uh, data, so which has got your face. And then we say, give your selfie. Uh, that selfie face is matched with your Aadhaar face. And then what happens is once it is successful, a credential is created and given back to you as a passenger and the credential is stored in your own phone. We do not store it anywhere. So it is a completely privacy by design ecosystem. We have consciously decided that we will not store any of the passengers personally identifiable information for the simple reason, right? I mean, you think about it. If I have got no data stored, no personally identifiable information stored of passengers, okay. then there is no risk of any breach, right? There is no risk of any loss. There is no yeah. risk of any data theft. There is no leak, uh, no risk of any pilferage also happening. Because there is nothing that, you know, uh, can go, uh, nothing that I have stored that, you know, people can hack into or access. So I'll give you an example. So imagine uh, if I had a database of, say, 5 million users. And if somebody, some smart guy uh, with the right tools wanted to hack into our uh, database and, say, succeeds in uh, accessing, then yeah. in one hack, they have got 5 million user database, right? Now you think about Digiatra. The way we have implemented is all credentials are stored in the individual's own phone. Now try to hack this. So you will have to, that person will have to hack 5 million users' phones. And you can imagine the degree of difficulty, right? It is 5 million times more, meaning that, you know, you could possibly hack one phone or two phones. But yeah. the point is, how do you hack 5 million phones to get uh, personally identifiable information of the passenger? So that is how we have actually uh, deployed the whole ecosystem. So it is called as self-sovereign identity. We use uh, uh, digital credentials, which are verifiable credentials. Uh, and verifiable credentials is nothing but a soft form of your physical identity document, right? Which uh, It has also got your face. Uh, and we use uh, decentralized identifiers. And decentralized identifiers ensure that, you know, uh, these conversations which are uh, set, like for example, when you want to share your boarding pass, uh, to the uh, airport, then there is a, a pair of DIDs which is uh, used. And these pair of uh, DIDs are, are are used only for that particular transaction. Meaning that, you know, uh, for any new transaction, another new pair of DIDs will be issued. So basically what is happening is, there is no trail back also possible with the use of uh, our sort of an ecosystem. Uh, and then we use a distributed ledger of trust, uh, which is uh, called as, uh, which is uh, Hyperledger Aries. 
and hyperledger we have chosen specifically from a credibility perspective hyperledger also belongs to uh, the linux foundation uh, and linux foundation as you know is one of the biggest world's uh, open source ecosystems uh, so from a credibility we also an associate member of hyperledger foundation uh, so the point is that you know we are able to get uh, access to support uh, and also uh, knowledge from the hyperledger uh, foundation team as well and what we use the trust layer also i'll explain so uh, the trust layer works in this way so for example i have issued a credential to you uh, what i'll do is i'll put a signature of mine which is digiatra foundation's signature which is able to identify that this credential which the user has shared to an airport has been issued by digiatra foundation so that is one check that the airport verifier will do second what we do is we generate a proof value for every credential we have issued so proof value is say, say for example your uh, credential has got your face uh, yeah, has got your name has got your uh, uh, date of birth gender right now these data points form a data string and this is what is the verifiable credential right for this data string we make a hash value out of that and we keep that hash value in the blockchain and okay. this hash value is so if somebody gets hold of this hash value they cannot make out you know anything out of it it's just a way to just make sure that the data which was presented by the user to the verifier has not been tampered with so say a smart guy takes the uh, verifiable credential in the phone and changes the name in the <laughs> credential and sends it to the airport verifier it won't work because the hash value will not match right so from that way we are a tamper evident ecosystem so without actually storing personally identifiable information i can just tell that hey this is not the credential that i had issued it is not going to work so that credential will not be accepted by the airport verifier so that's how we have made it completely privacy preserving tamper evident and i would say from a risk of uh, data loss theft uh, leakage pilferage we have mitigated those risks completely okay, okay. so blockchain is one of the technologies which is helping you do that yeah a distributed ledger uh, hyperledger aries and what's the uh, current number of downloads so we have crossed 6 million uh, 6 million wow. last in the last few days we have crossed 6 million okay and uh, uh, one other feature that we are trying to work on is uh, we are going to uh, have the e passport based enrollment and the e passport based enrollment basically will enable Uh, any global citizen to enroll into digiatra and uh, they could be in india and they could use uh, digiatra for domestic passenger flow uh, and going forward uh, we are already sort of speaking to the ministry of external affairs uh, and uh, the other ministries to ensure that you know the same journey experience can be given for international travel also including you know say border control but these are early stages uh, we are still having those discussions uh and then uh, you can think of the other thing which is so when when we speak of digi yatra today we know digi yatra being adopted at airports in india but if you look at international travel uh think about it so you went through seamless passenger flow at indian airport uh say you are flying from delhi to say frankfurt and uh, you went through seamless uh, passenger flow in, De- in uh, delhi airport boarded the flight and when you reach frankfurt do you want to wait for 2 hours in the long immigration queue i'm sure not right so mm-hmm. you would have actually shared your credentials to frankfurt airport also before traveling itself and frankfurt airport would already have your credentials and there you will find that you know the eu citizens they have got this automated border control gates where you will never see anybody or very few passengers using it a line of uh, e gates <laughs> which is sparsely used because it's for eu citizens only and we oh. will be like you know standing in those long queues for other <laughs> citizens so Correct. what will happen is you will get the ability to use those gates where you have to just scan your passport your face will get matched with the credentials that you had shared and then you are through so that's something which is like a a fantastic experience right especially after a 9 10 hour long flight if you are able to swiftly go through the border control gates at destination right that is something which is the power of digi yatra that we can give at destination also the same experience that you know you got in india thank you suresh for taking out time and uh, talking to us and uh, hopefully we'll soon see an seamless international experience as well with digi yatra absolutely bonita 
very nice talking to you thank you bye bye thank you